this edition of RPP News. COVID cases double. Hundreds of kangaroos are trapped. And we have a ticket to Funky Town. Hello, I'm Katie Sharp. Welcome to the latest edition of RPP News, bringing you stories from across Frankston and the Mornington Peninsula. Homicide Squad detectives have charged a man with murder following a fatal shooting in Frankston last month. A 43-year-old Frankston man faced a bedside remand hearing after he was arrested at a house in Cranbourne following a week-long search by police. He was treated by paramedics at the scene of arrest and has remained under police guard in hospital since. The charge relates to the death of a 34-year-old Frankston man on the 18th of September. Crime Command detectives have thanked the public for their help in apprehending the suspect. Vaccination numbers are rising at an impressive rate on the peninsula, but unfortunately so are COVID cases. Frankston City has hit the magic target, with 80% of its eligible population having received their first vaccination, and the Mornington Peninsula is at 88%. But active local cases have again doubled in number, with 138 in Frankston and 86 on the peninsula. We have a new hotspot at the Bay's aged care facility in Hastings where an infected person attended every day between Saturday the 25th of September and Friday the 1st of October. This is a tier one site so if you visited the facility on any of those days you must get tested immediately and quarantine for 14 days from the day of exposure. Further inland Gelato Unu in Seaford is a tier two site. If you visited on Monday the 27th of September, you must get tested and isolate until you receive a negative result. The state government is no longer reporting all low-risk exposure sites, so stay distanced and masked and get tested if you have cold symptoms. Red Hill Ward Councillor David Gill is calling for the Shire to intervene in the possible culling of some 280 eastern grey kangaroos. The kangaroos have become trapped inside a wildlife exclusion fence at Cape Shank. An online petition started by locals claims that kangaroos have no access back to their roaming grounds of Greensbush, which is part of the National Park. They had been entering the property to feed through a broken fence line which is now closed and face the prospect of being put down. The petition urges the Minister for Energy, Environment and Climate Change, Lily D'Ambrosio, to intervene and save the kangaroos by withdrawing any permits to cull and directing their safe release back into the adjacent parklands. The state government has responded, stating that the land manager at the Cape Shank property has the authority to control wildlife for lethal control of eastern grey kangaroos at the site. The conservation regulator has not detected any breaches of the Wildlife Act. Undeterred, Councillor Gill says action must be taken. In a sense, um, it's everybody's business to protect our wildlife. The council has policies to protect wildlife. We spend, um, uh, we spend uh, ratepayers' money on trying to create and help others like land care groups create uh, uh, corridors for wildlife. Uh, and that's concerning biodiversity. Uh, I think that the people of the Mornington Peninsula want to keep their koalas. They want to keep the kangaroos. They want to keep the echidnas. If you're an artist and fancy escaping your usual four walls for a while, the Police Point Artist in Residence program is open again. Available to emerging and established artists, writers, musicians and creatives, there are both supported and fee-paying residencies ranging from two to four weeks. The 19th century gatekeeper's cottage was originally built for the boatmen of the quarantine station at Portsea and then occupied by the police officers with the first quarantine station superintendent. Intendant. The cottage is situated on the border of Point Nepean Park with outstanding coastal scenery and panoramic views and not a housemate or family member inside. Applications close on the 1st of November. The Shire has eased burn-off restrictions this month to help prepare for the fire season ahead. During October, open-air burning is allowed on Fridays and Saturdays between 9am and 4pm on land between 500 and 1500 square metres in size, provided that your property is within the Shire bushfire-prone area and that burning is for fire prevention purposes. No more than one cubic metre of vegetation can be burnt at any one time and the fire must not be within 10 metres of any neighbouring dwelling. Don't forget to be mindful of the impact of burn-offs on neighbours. Smoke presents a health risk to vulnerable groups, so with more people learning and working from home, try other methods of vegetation disposal, such as chipping, mulching and green waste bins. And acclaimed ABC journalist and author Paul Kennedy is this week's guest on Frankston Library's Frank Talk series.
It is 1993 and a serial killer is loose on the streets of Frankston. The community is paralysed by fear and a state's police force and national media come to find a killer. Meanwhile, 17-year-old Paul Kennedy is searching for something else entirely. He is focused on finishing school, getting drafted into the AFL and falling in love. Funky Town is a coming-of-age memoir told of over the course of one extraordinary year. Paul spoke to RPP about life and then even gave us an exciting scoop. Uh, between you and me, this is an exclusive for your program. We, al we, al we always love the scoops here, Paul. <laughs> Here's a scoop. I'm going to finally turn my hand in the next... Hopefully in the next six months, I'm going to set some time aside and have a go at writing, uh, turning 15 young men into a screenplay wow. and and hopefully um, get a little bit of interest to, to turn that into a movie. Too many people have read that book about the old Mornington football team and said to me, this should be a movie. And now I'm, I'm going to, um, to have a crack at writing a screenplay, but uh, that'll be something maybe in the, in the near future. Join Paul on Frank Talk this coming Wednesday at 5.30 via Zoom. The event is free, but bookings are essential as numbers are limited. After the break, we go to Patricia with the coming week's weather report. There's a quiet revolution happening on the rooftops of Australia. And at Solar Heart, we're proud to be leading the charge. One home, one family, one solar panel at a time. Helping smart Aussies make a real difference to the planet. Cutting their energy bills and connecting them to their smart energy future. Get smart. Get solar hard. RWP FM and Bendigo Bank have a long-standing relationship. Without the Bendigo Bank, we wouldn't have a transmitter site, we wouldn't have a studio, we wouldn't have an outside broadcast fan, and without them, we can't tell the stories that we think the Bendigo Bank community, our community, needs to hear. Thanks, Bendigo Bank. Thanks for your support. Established in 1988, Progress Science has been servicing the local community for 30 years. Located on the Mornington Peninsula, they are the number one destination for all your signage needs. Specialising in a variety of signage from vehicles to shop fronts, occasional and corporate events, short term, long term and everything in between. If it's signs you need, be it large or small, Progress Signs is the place to call. Available 24-7 at progress-signs.com.au or call the team on 5975 9188. Thinking Signs? Think Progress Signs, a station sponsor. Patricia and welcome to this week's RWP Mornington Peninsula 7-day weather forecast. Today we are visiting Sea Winds Gardens and Lookout. Located near Arthur Seat's summit, Sea Winds Gardens offers spectacular views across Port Phillip and the Mornington and Bellarine peninsulas from the bay and northern lookouts. From up here, we can also get a bird's eye view of this week's weather. Today, Saturday the 9th of October, brought us a mostly sunny morning, which then led to a cloudy day and patchy rain. We reached a top of 21 and a low of 8. Sunday sees the showers increasing. Expect an overcast day with a 90% chance of showers across the peninsula we will be looking for a top of 14 and a low of 9. Monday sees the rain continuing throughout the morning, leading to a mostly cloudy day. We can expect a low of 7 and a high of 14. Tuesday sees a mostly sunny day with a chance of morning fog. Expect a low of 6 and a high of 18. Wednesday, the 13th of October, sees the rain returning with a 90% chance of rain across the peninsula. 
look for a low of 9 and a high of 20. Thursday will be much the same as Wednesday, overcast and wet. Expect to feel a low of 9 and a high of 16. And finally, Friday brings another wet day with a 90% chance of rain. We should feel a low of 8 and a top of 15. The gardens here at Sea Winds were developed by Sir Thomas and Lady Travers from 1946. The Travers imported deciduous trees from their property in Parkville and purchased the William Ricketts sculptures from William Ricketts himself. Sea Wind is a visual joy on many levels. Well, that's all for this week. Try to be kind, patient and understanding with each other. Until next time, take good care. And now to our surf guru, Muzz, with the surf report. Morning, Muzz here again with this week's morning to the intro surf report. Um, week in front of us, looks like spring has uh, arrived. So uh, the uh, good run of surf we had in September with a lot of sort of more wintry west and westerly. Looks like it's coming to an end, although in saying that, uh, it's always that quick turnaround of weather, so uh, onshore one day, offshore the next, onshore. So that's pretty much this week's program. Um, Friday, uh, there'll be, uh, looks like the winds will be around to the north northwest, so there'll be waves around, only be small in Western Port, but uh, if you look around, you'll probably get a surf, maybe into Saturday, then uh, Saturday afternoon, looks like we're gonna get a bit of a change again. Uh, Sunday, the swell's gonna pick up fairly solidly yet again so it'll be waves in western port yet again for another sunday but the winds may not be great so looking like they might be sort of west southwest tending southerly during the day and that looks like uh that'll be from monday and tuesday It'll be wednesday next week again by the time it looks like it's going to go back to the north northeast and it looks like we might get another little run of beach breaks about that time too so there's some good banks around if you know where to look and uh, so there's a bit of bit of ways for everyone. Every day is a bit closer to the end of lockdown. Crowds are backed off again because obviously trades are back and um, schools are sort of online is uh, going ahead. And uh, a few of the people who came down from town have gone back, obviously. So enjoy your time in the surf, and uh, I'll see you next week. And that's all from our team here at RWP News, serving the community with stories that matter to you. Keep watching and do tell your friends. Stay safe, use the QR codes and support your local businesses. Bringing the news from coast to coast across Frankston and the Mornington Peninsula, I'm Katie Sharp. See you for the next edition.